بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم بیک ان لیکچر 14 اسٹوڈنٹس بیسیکلی وی اسٹارٹ ایگزامپل نمبر 4 اینڈ بائی ڈی ڈی ایم میتھڈ وین یو ہیو بین آل اوور دا سپورٹس ایز یو سی ان دس پیکچر اینڈ ٹوڈے دس از اوور ایگزامپل اوکے وچ وی اسٹارٹ بیسیکلی وی وی ڈیڈ دس ایگزامپل دس سیم ایگزامپل ان ایگزامپل نمبر 1 ود اؤٹ دیز بیمز اوکے so now we are basically uh, we in lecture number 12 and 13 we complete the analysis of this frame and now we are in this lecture inshallah we will design it first of all you must see that our column strip width is 5 feet 5 feet okay and the middle strip width is 5 feet we start the designing you see how these movements basically we uh, by these coefficients one thing important that the coefficients are change here okay in the um, in the flat flat slab system these coefficients are different when you have no beams when you have beams so the coefficients are different so these are longitudinal coefficients and then by uh, relative stiffness and uh, by torsional factors we determine the lateral distribution factors which are these one and we distribute the movements in the lateral direction this is for interior frame and then again for exterior frame we longitudinally distribute the movements and then we transversely distribute the movements okay and now we are in the design stage but remember these middle step are the movements and these column step of the movements for which we were going to design one thing more these are the total movements for both middle steps we have to hop them okay or either we can design for for this whole movement and we will consider both Uh, middle steps okay similarly for the column step as well so let's start the design okay uh, basically uh, the most important thing in this design is already if you uh, if you uh, design for a two way slab system basically we count we consider two depths ds that is shorter effector depth and longer effector depth now you see here that this is my bottom bar and this is my top bar so the the distance to the from the top of the slab to the center of the top bar is called your dl while in shorter direction the bar which is placed in shorter direction the distance is measured as ds some designer basically use the average of these two while some they are using different values although if you are averaging you are um, basically uh you you have to sacrifice basically this ds because this is more than the average as well as dl so this ds give you you more movement movement capacity as compared to the average and dl okay so both approaches are used okay and uh, you calculate now let me let me explain this formula because here uh, remember in <clears throat> if you watch my uh lecture series basically which is uh, related to um which is related to basically the uh, the frame analysis if you go to my youtube channel and uh, you watch my uh, playlist in my playlist basically i i i uploaded one of frame analysis which is related to beams that frame series okay here we have basically where is my playlist this is my playlist and uh, here this two way slab analysis system is just similar to the present slab slab system okay just similar you have to use those same principles i design the movements uh, the the reinforcement for the for the movements in that two way slab system by a different formula but here they are using a different approach so let me show you if you if you are interested to understand this table let me explain it okay but although you can design the the movements like you got here as uh, by the same way as we did in the uh, lecture number 7 and 8 okay or 6 okay but you can use this approach as well okay so what they use basically remember we have first of all we have to categorize our movements as we did in example uh, lecture number 7 you need to categorize the movement in uh, in in exterior frame and as well as for your interior frame this is my interior frame okay and this is my exterior frame okay 
Now the widths are 5, 5 feet for each. But remember in this example, basically they what they did, they, they exclude the, the width of the beam that is 14 inches from your column strip. Your column strip is 10 feet. So they exclude that minus 14 inches and they got 106. Okay, this is a conservative value. Clear for middle strip 5 feet and 5 feet. They are using both values. Okay, now one thing is very important. Uh, the moment which we got here, you see here. Let me show you the moments. Okay, let me show you here we have. Here we have for the exterior frame 5, 27, 33, 17, 31. I represent here 5, 27, 20, minus 22, 31 and 17 again. And similarly for uh, the interior frame, the movements are, um, let me show you, these are the movements. For column strip and this is, uh, sorry, this is for middle strip and this is for column strip. Now, remember these, these are the total middle strip movements. You have to divide them by 2 if you are representing here, okay. But in the, in the design, I will show you what they did basically. Remember, you can design the, the, the middle strip as a, as a beam as well. Just considering a beam whose width is basically to, will be equals to, let me show you, this is my column strip, let's say, and this is my depth, that is 7 inches, and this is my uh, width. This, this width is basically 5 feet okay and the depth is 7 inches and the uh, length will be determined 25 okay now 5 5 okay you have to divide them so just considering if you are considering 5 for the exterior and 5 half so you 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 are allowed okay you you will consider the maximum value as well 27 27 almost equal so just considering the maximum value and similarly here from these four values consider the maximum value because we are designing for maximum value, okay? Because finally we have to combine your exterior, although we design exterior frame separately, interior frame separately, and then we combine. But if you combine, so finally you have to decide one placement of reinforcement, okay? You can't do this that you provide the reinforcement different for minus 22, different for minus 30, 31. Practically, it is impossible, it's blessing because it is dif difficult. And similarly, for 63 uh, divided by 2, okay, different than 58 different. No, this is not possible. So, you design the column middle strip as a beam. This is, you will be allowed. Okay, and basically, they, they use this approach here. Or you can design the strip as a, uh, as a slab for one feet span. Now, the moment which you see here, that is 5 kip per kip feet per strip movement. So you have to uh, you have to divide that movement by the width of the column strip as we did basically in our example uh, in our example right here okay right uh, you see here we divide them there by the column strip width and by the middle strip width okay in example number one you see here uh, let me show you uh, that division okay this is very important clear you see here. These are the movements which is divided by the column strip width and by the middle strip width. Okay, already we got the movements which is different from this. That is the total movement. Okay, these are the total movement. This is also divided. Uh, let me show you. This is very important. Okay, this is very, very important. You, you know the process of categorization. These are the total movement and then they finally divide it. So you have to follow the same those principles. Okay. Now, let me discuss basically the upper categorization in the east-west direction, then you have to represent the movements in north-south direction. Remember, uh, this is the formula, okay? Uh, remember, this is the formula which is available in the Nelson book. You already know rho minimum, okay? And you already rho, this is E of steel divided by BD. So, if you, if you got your rho value, you can easily find your a rep steel clear so this is the formula from this formula you have to find out the row value you know all the values we have phi value f y value b d b's fell inches d is 5.5 inches they basically use the dl okay and similarly they do the calculation 
and the simplification is basically right here. Now they got the row value and the equation which they write here basically let me show you the equation. Uh, this is the equation. Okay. After simplification I write, I show you the uh, equation as well. This is the equation how they derived. Okay. This is not so simple that you can guard this equation. Okay. This is very difficult. Now by by just knowing the value of mu dash. Now mu dash is that moment basically you see here uh, for interior this is the this table is for your interior frame. Now interior frame interior panel and this is your exterior panel. This is your exterior slab or exterior panel and this is your interior panel or interior slab. Now what they did in interior frame you have column strip and your metal strip. In column strip you have negative movement, positive movement. Negative movement, positive movement. Clear? Let me show you. Let me show you here. This is my, uh, remember this is my interior frame. In interior frame you see you have uh, here. You have negative movement, you have positive movement. This is my column, uh, this is my interior slab. And this is my exterior slab. In exterior slab, you see exterior negative, exterior positive, and interior negative. Clear? So, the width of 105, basically this is 120, but they are just subtracting that uh, 14 inches, so 106. 106, 106. This is for exterior, exterior slab. Okay? This is for exterior slab column strip. And similarly, this one is for 120 now this is for middle strip so for middle strip we have no beam so that's why they are using full width similarly here you see 106 106 but for middle strip they are using 120 120 clear these same because the bars is now calculated in the longitudinal direction and remember this point is very important let me discuss it that you see the longitudinal bar as in flat slab system we provide this longitudinal bar that the basically the black line is basically representing the longitudinal bar in east switch direction but in flat slab we provide this bar in the downward direction in the downs okay while the dark bars are on the top these are the short bar these are short bars and these are long bars so the short bars now basically as this is a beam slab supported system so that's why your short bar will be on the bottom okay and uh, the next thing is MU, 38 kip, this is in the table available. Now you have to divide this 38 by this width. Why? To convert the movement into kef feet per feet. Okay, this is the movement which is kef feet per strip. Okay, by column strip. But here you have to divide this by 106, you got 4.30. And then just plugging this MU dash value here, and do the calculation you got this value and I did the calculation and I got the value right here okay where it is in that here here 4.3 I plug the value I got the value okay this one now uh, after uh, once you got this value you have to just multiply with BD you got this amount of steel no this is total amount of steel which will be provided in the 106 width. Remember 106 width. Now, if you divide this by the number 4 bar area, you got the spacing, number 4 bar area by the spacing formula, you got 13.48. But here, remember, this is important point. They are using B equals to, uh, let me check it, 12 inches, I think so. 1.57. 5, 7, let me ch choose 106, no, 106 times area bar 0.196, okay, equal divided by area of steel 1.57, it gave me 13.23 inches, mean that they are using 106, okay, this is 106, 106 they are basically considering the whole column width, okay, this is the spacing now, and uh, 
the, the final spacing they are using is 99 inches center to center clear and uh, 9 inches center to center similarly they for positive we have effective dip we have positive movement and they divided by this one you got this one okay and the rest of the calculation is same so I think basically you just uh, take the values from those tables okay and you just need to divide it by the these words and uh, you you do the rest of calculation which is easy but you must make sure if you are providing such amount of reinforcement uh, you have to check this reinforcement with row minimum remember you must calculate your AS minimum steel okay now remember here I am using this one so area of steel will be different now if I am using this spacing then you have to recalculate your AST and AST is what area bar divide by spacing that is 9 inches times 106 okay here B is 106 and once you got this AST you have to compare this with AS minimum if it is uh, greater than then okay if it is less than so then you will use AS minimum clear no this is all about for your longer direction after that you have to do the design for your shorter direction uh, sorry for uh, your exterior frame and this is your exterior frame same formula the widths are different right here okay the widths are different no you noting down here this is 53 this is 53 inches they are basically using although this is 60 inches okay so 60 inches basically and for positive uh, for middle step they are using 60 60 inches okay you see here so 53 basically 60 minus 53 they they're using 7 inches mean that now they are considering this from the center of the column or you can say from the center of the beam this is this length is basically this width of column stem is basically from the center of the beam okay and uh, similarly for middle step they are considering the full width and for all and similarly as this is in the east west direction still you are using 5.5 inches these movements are taken from the tables okay and then they divide this movement by this value they got this one and similarly they calculate the row from equation and again they did the calculation now again you have to recalculate your AST okay from these values and then compare it with row max as maximum and as minimum similarly you see the detailing but remember this is east west direction in analysis you have to do in north south direction clear these are the representation you see one thing is very most important which i want to, sh uh, to show you uh, number four at the rate of 12 inch center to center number four at the rate of nine inch center to center this is positive reinforcement you see in the shorter direction the spacing is maximum while in longer direction the spacing is minimum so in many youtubers basically if you if you watch such video practical videos which is recorded on the side they say that in the shorter direction the spacing should be minimum and in the longer direction the spacing should be maximum this is wrong okay so they teach you the wrong way okay remember this is not always possible although it is better to provide minimum uh, spacing in the shorter direction and maximum spacing in the longer direction uh, but this is not true you see here okay it all depends upon the design okay because in longer direction we have maximum movement while in shorter direction here we have minimum movements so how you can say that we will provide minimum reinforcement minimum spacing in the shorter and maximum spacing in the longer so this is wrong okay so don't uh, learn such kind of knowledge okay similarly you see you see here for negative bars they are providing the same reinforcement this is the detailing for both short and uh, uh, for north south and the east west direction okay uh, i think so this is only for east west direction you do the analysis for uh, the north south direction this is the cross section remember these darts lines are in shorter direction now although in flat slab system these are the east west bars we provide in this pattern but now these are the short direction bar okay so this flat slab system and beam slab support system is different clear 
And uh, the next, the shear reinforcement, punching shear reinforcement, I already uploaded lecture number 11 and lecture number 10 regarding this topic. And uh, let me show you one another example. This is example. Okay, you see here, this is example number three. I already uploaded this example on my channel. But uh, let me show you here. Mm, here we have. I already uploaded this lecture. Uh, this is lecture number nine. You can watch it. Okay, I did the analysis, but I did not do the design. Okay, so let me here this example. Okay, this is example I already uploaded. This is lecture number uh, nine. Okay, so the same example. Uh, check it whether this is same or not. Okay, so height of building and uh, sizes of columns and live loads and uh, please check it. Although dimensions are same. Okay, so I did basically the same analysis in my uh, that lecture number nine so you just watch that lecture let me show you the design okay so they basically did the design in the same way in the same table okay so I think so now you will be understand they just B D and all the values and uh, okay the same table for east which direction for exterior frame okay and then for uh, uh, punching shear. So let me discuss this for corner column because in lecture number 11 and 10 I just checked the bar, the punching shear for interior column. So here you see uh, you have what you have to do you have to find out your critical parameter and for corner column this is your critical parameter and HFD effective depth okay and uh, VU is nothing it is the tributary area times loading. And this is the critical parameter. 17.5 is your critical parameter. 14 plus d over 2, 3.5. That is 17 and this is 17. So 17 is your, now is your basically your critical parameter. And you have to square it. So to guard your, this area. Now what is your shaded area? These, this dash line is your tributary area. So that tributary area minus this area will give you basically the tributary area for your shear okay and uh, then you have to use those five equations and you have to select the minimum value okay your beta naught is 35 because 17 plus 17 okay and uh, now you are you are punching capacity of your uh, shear capacity of your concrete is more than the punching shear so that's why corner column is less, less safe similarly for H column the same procedure but here you have one side is more so that's why this plus this plus this, this is your B naught. And the area will be this 17 times this one. That is 17 plus 3.5, uh, 14 plus 3.5 plus 3.5. Okay, so 7, 14 plus 7 times 21, uh, I think so. So now again, you have to find out your tributary area times your load. This is your shear. And then again, you compare your shear capacity of concrete against your punching shear. And similarly for in this direction and uh, here for interior column. So this is this dash line is your whole tributary area. You have to subtract this area, this one, like we did in uh, footing design. Okay. And here you have you see you are um, this is I think so 21 and 21. So 21 basically 21 times 21 divided by 144 to convert in feet square. And against you have to compare it. And this is the final detailing which they show you in both east, west and north south direction. So in uh, in this case you see number 4 at the right of 9 inch, number 4 at the right of 9 inch. So you see bottom bars and top. Both one is bottom one is top. Although these are bottom bars. Double layer of steel is basically not provided. Okay so I think so this is this one is basically uh, top one is bottom okay in the mid portion but you see the the reinforcement in the in the in the column stiff area so number four at the right of five inch center to center this is positive reinforcement bottom and this is your top reinforcement okay negative and uh, remember the advantage of beams because they're increasing the um, uh, they're decreasing the middle strip movements Okay, that is the advantage. You see negative bars, number 4 at the right of 5 inch. Although, this is not happen when you have beams. And similarly, you see 
the negative in Barpur at the right of 3 inches, so very close reinforcement. Similarly, in column strip, the positive area you see number 4 at the right of 5 in center to center. This is also very huge amount of steel. The top reinforcement is minimum, and this is for your um, for your uh, positive, okay. And uh, similar in the beam, number four, the, this is positive reinforcement, and this is negative reinforcement. So this is the detailing according to ACI. And uh, remember here, uh, number four at the right of five in center to center. So so if in flat slab, uh, in flat slab analysis basically although this is a flat slab analysis so these now these are the east west bars and these are the short bars okay these top are the short bars while these are the longboard bars but when you have beam supported slab system then this these are the your short bars and these are your longer bars so this is the difference basically in flat slab and in the beam slab supported system okay so this basically winds up remember there here you have no beams sometime basically you have edge beams okay sometime you have edge beams so in that case the coefficient is different although in interior you have no beams but on the per periphery basically you you will provide and you provide that beams basically for torsional uh, for torsional uh, to increase the torsional capacity of your slab because there is a huge amount of torsional stresses basically if you don't provide these uh, edge beams. So if you have edge beams, the coefficient now will be different. Remember, the coefficient will be different. In that case, the coefficients are, uh, uh, I already discussed it, okay, uh, please, uh, here we have uh, edge beams, no other beams. So in that case, these coefficients will be used. This winds up, if you have any question, any suggestions, please share your suggestions and uh, you may uh, although you have questions regarding the design i think so so if you have any problem in design you can share thank you for watching